In this lecture, we will be looking at the various styles of architecture found in both past and current residential construction. After this lecture you should be familiar with the names of the various styles. You will also be able to identify each style and some of their key components and features. You should also be able to determine when styles have been combined and which styles share common themes. The Bungalow one of the most popular styles of home, these narrow, rectangular one and one half story houses originated in California during the 1880s as a reaction to the elaborate decoration of Victorian homes. The style then moved eastward to the Midwest in the early 20th century, where it remained popular until the Great Depression. Bungalows have low pitched gabled or hipped roofs and small covered porches at the entry. The style became so popular that you could order a bungalow kit from Sears and Roebuck catalogs. The name bungalow had its origins in India, where it indicated a small, thatched home. In colder climate areas, they often include a full-height basement with living areas. Cape Cod Some of the first houses built in the United States were Cape Cods. The original colonial Cape Cod homes were shingle-sided, one-story cottages with no dormers. During the mid-20th century, the small, uncomplicated Cape Cod shape became popular in suburban developments. A 20th century Cape Cod is square or rectangular with one or one and a half stories and steeply pitched, gabled roofs. The second story often has sloped ceiling areas between the dormers. They offer an economical way of achieving a second story by constructing living area within the roof space. It may have dormers and shutters. The cladding is usually siding or brick. Craftsman. Popularized at the turn of the 20th century by architect and furniture designer Gustav Stickley in his magazine, The Craftsman. The Craftsman style bungalow reflected, he said. A house reduced to its simplest form. Its low, broad proportions and absolute lack of ornamentation gives it a character, so natural and unaffected, that it seems to blend with any landscape. The style, which was also widely billed as the California Bungalow by architects such as Charles Sumner Green and Henry Mather Green, featured overhanging eaves, a low-slung gabled roof, and wide front porches framed by pedestal-like tapered columns. Materials often included stone, rough-hewn wood, and stucco. Many homes have wide front porches across part of the front, supported by columns. Colonial America's colonial period encompassed a number of housing types and styles. For more information about colonial styles, see Cape Cod, Georgian, and Dutch colonial. However, when we speak of the colonial style, we often are referring to a rectangular, symmetrical home with bedrooms on the second floor. They are usually finished with brick on the outside. The double-hung windows usually have many small, equally sized square panes. During the late 1800s and throughout the 20th century, builders borrowed colonial ideas to create refined colonial revival homes with elegant central hallways and elaborate cornices. Unlike the original colonials, colonial revival homes are often sited in white siding and trimmed with black or green shutters. Dutch Colonial This American style originated in homes built by German or Deutsch settlers in Pennsylvania as early as the 1600s. A hallmark of the style is a broad gambrel roof with flaring eaves that extend over the porches, creating a barn-like effect. Early homes were a single room and additions were added to each end, creating a distinctive linear floor plan. End walls are generally of stone and the chimney is usually located on one or both ends. Double-hung sash windows with outward swinging wood casements, dormers with shed-like overhangs, and a central Dutch double doorway are also common. The double door, which is divided horizontally, was once used to keep livestock out of the home while allowing light and air to filter through the open top. The style enjoyed a revival during the first three decades of the 20th century, as the country looked back with nostalgia to its colonial past. Farmhouse Developing in the American Midwest, this style spread extensively into rural and farming communities throughout North America. It borrows heavily from the French provincial style, but has also developed into a Cape Cod-type style in certain areas especially in Canadian rural areas. It employs cleaner lines and less ornamentation than its European counterparts. 
They were traditionally designed for large, sometimes multi-generational families in more rural settings. French Provincial Balance and symmetry are the ruling characteristics of this formal style. Homes are often brick with detailing in copper or slate. Windows and chimneys are symmetrical and perfectly balanced, at least in original versions of the style. Defining features include a steep, high, hip roof, balcony and porch balustrades, rectangle doors set in arched openings, and double French windows with shutters. Second-story windows usually have a curved head that breaks through the cornice. The design had its origins in the style of rural manor homes, or chateaus, built by the French nobles during the reign of Louis XIV in the mid-1600s. The French provincial design was a popular revival style in the 1920s and again in the 1960s. Georgian. Befitting a king. In fact, the style is named after King George of England. Georgian homes are refined and symmetrical, with paired chimneys and a decorative crown over the front door. Modeled after the more elaborate homes of England, the Georgian style dominated the British colonies in the 1700s. Most surviving Georgian sport. Side gabled roofs. Are two to three stories high. And are constructed in brick or stone. Georgian homes almost always feature an orderly row of five windows across the second story. Modern-day builders often combine features of the refined Georgian style with decorative flourishes from the more formal federal style. Gothic Revival The influence of English Romanticism and the mass of elaborate wooden millwork after the Industrial Revolution fueled the construction of Gothic Revival homes in the mid-1800s. These picturesque structures are marked by Gothic windows with distinctive pointed arches, exposed framing timbers, and steep, vaulted roofs with cross gables. Extravagant features may include towers and verandas. Ornate wooden detailing is generously applied as gable, window, and door trim. American architects Alexander Jackson Davis and Andrew Jackson Downing championed Gothic in domestic buildings in the 1830s. Most Gothic revival homes were constructed between 1840 and 1870 in the Northeast. Log Homes Drawing direct inspiration from the pioneer days of North America, this style utilizes pre-industrial revolution techniques and materials, combined with modern construction technologies to achieve stunning results. This style can borrow features from various other styles. Mediterranean This style house takes its influence from the sunny countries that border the Mediterranean Sea. Italian and Greek styles are major contributors to the design of the classic Mediterranean style house, although it also takes some style concepts from Spain and is sometimes called Spanish modern. Usually finished with stucco exteriors and accents, it also features clay tile roofs and lighter colors. The style is more commonly found in the southern and midwest states in America. Modern or contemporary. The modern home is by far the most eclectic and varied architectural style. Modern homes have been around since the mid-20th century, when architects began experimenting with non-traditional architectural concepts such as non-symmetry, flat roofs, passive design, and abstract form. The result has been an ever-evolving and very adaptive style, with less constraint and more imagination. The style can vary from a more traditional modern style, employing and modernizing aspects of other traditional styles, to full futuristic and abstract concepts. The modern home has permeated design trends in a lot of countries, as architects push the limits of what a building can be. Much to the chagrin of King Charles of England. Neoclassical. A well-publicized, world-class event can inspire fashion for years. At least that's the case with the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, which showcased cutting-edge classical buildings that architects around the country emulated in their own residential and commercial designs. The neoclassical style remained popular through the 1950s in incarnations from one-story cottages to multi-level mansions. Its identifying ionic or Corinthian columned porches often extend the full height of the house. Also typical. Symmetrical facades. Elaborate, decorative designs above and around doorways. And roofline balustrades or parapet walls. Queen Anne. A substyle of the late Victorian era, Queen Anne is a collection of coquettish detailing and eclectic materials. Steep cross-gabled roofs, towers, and vertical windows are all typical of a Queen Anne home. 
Inventive, multi-story floor plans often include projecting wings, several porches and balconies, and multiple chimneys with decorative chimney pots. Wooden gingerbread trim and scrolled and rounded fish scale patterns frequently graces gables and porches. Massive cut stone foundations are typical of period houses. Created by English architect Richard Norman Shaw, the style was popularized after the Civil War by architect Henry Hobson Richardson and spread rapidly, especially in the South and West. Ranch Sometimes called the California ranch style, this home in the modern family originated there in 1930s. It emerged as one of the most popular American styles in the 1950s and 60s, when the automobile had replaced early 20th century forms of transportation, such as streetcars. Now mobile homebuyers could move to the suburbs into bigger homes on bigger lots. The style takes its cues from Spanish colonial, prairie and craftsman homes and is characterized by its one-story, pitched roof construction, built-in garage, wood or brick exterior walls, sliding in picture windows, and sliding doors leading to patios. Shed A subset of the modern style, shed homes were particular favorites of architects in the 1960s and 1970s. They feature multiple roofs sloping in different directions, which creates multi-geometric shapes. Wood shingle, board, or brick exterior cladding are also featured. Recessed and downplate front doorways and linear windows are commonplace. There is virtually no symmetry to the style. A more modern version of the style has been revived in the 21st century. Split level. A modern style that architects created to sequester certain living activities, such as sleeping or socializing, split levels offered a multi-level alternative to the ubiquitous style in the 1950s. The nether parts of a typical design were devoted to a garage and TV room. The mid-level, which usually jutted out from the two-story section, offered quieter quarters, such as the living and dining rooms. And the area above the garage was designed for bedrooms. Found mostly in the East and Midwest, split levels, like their ranch counterparts, were constructed with various building materials and stylized accents. Tudor This architecture style was popular in the 1920s and 1930s and continues to be a mainstay in suburbs across North America. The defining characteristics are half-timbering on bay windows and upper floors, and facades that are dominated by one or more steeply pitched cross gables. Patterned brick or stone walls are common, as are rounded doorways, multi-paned casement windows, board and batten cladding, and large stone chimneys. A subtype of the Tudor Revival style is the Cotswold Cottage. With a sloping roof and a massive chimney at the front, a Cotswold Cottage may remind you of a picturesque storybook home. Victorian Victorian architecture dates from the second half of the 19th century, when America was exploring new approaches to building and design. Advancements in machine technology meant that Victorian-era builders could easily incorporate mass-produced ornamentation such as brackets, spindles, and patterned shingles. The last true Victorians were constructed in the early 1900s, but contemporary builders often borrow Victorian ideas, designing eclectic neo-Victorians. These homes combine modern materials with 19th-century details, such as curved towers and spindled porches. A number of Victorian styles are recreated on the fanciful Main Street at Disney themed parks in Florida, California, and Europe. Let's eat! Would you please shut up?